What are the best uh, IP set, the optimum, ideal IP set? And here we are not talking about the uh, price, cost or anything like that. I'm just basing this video on my own experience. As you know, I have hundreds of IP sets. Probably I have the largest IP collection in the UK, uh, if not in Europe. And I have spent a lot of money on that. And uh, I use and enjoy all of them. But my experience, uh, I'm going to boil it down uh, in a short video, hopefully, that uh, helped others to decide if they have a telescope and they want to use it uh, without spending too much money, get the best value for money, get the best views possible. And uh, I have came to the conclusion for having the best optimum IP set, you only need three eyepieces. And I will explain why I'm saying this. Uh, for any view of any celestial object or finding it, as you know, if you have used a telescope, finding it is most difficult. And for that purpose, you need a eyepiece to be used as a finder eyepiece. So something that gives you the highest uh, uh, number of the focal length, that is 40 millimeter, for example, and give us the lowest magnification so you don't see much of the magnification of the star fields. And uh, to me, this can be boiled down to two eyepieces, either a 40 millimeter plus -o or a 32 millimeter plus -o. This is a Ostara 40 millimeter plus -o. This eyepiece is legendary, very similar to the uh, at most scientific RKE 28 millimeter, but better than that. I'm using this all the time. This is one of my best eyepieces. As you can see, when you look through this eyepiece, you don't see much of the eyepiece uh, rim. And it's rare with any eyepiece to have such a thing. This is giving you the uh, eyepiece uh, spacewalk experience. And you can buy it. I bought this probably 15 pounds uh, after the COVID due to the uh, chain, supply chain problems, they come from China. You can buy it yet, uh, well, maybe it have increased 20 pound, 25 pound, dollar-wise, probably $30. The worth, I'm telling you, this worth probably five times the value that I mentioned. So if, if one day you see this $150, that is the time that you say that, okay, this is now expensive. Anything lower than that, this worth it. And if you don't have even this one, a 32 millimeter or you know, 25 millimeter, that can serve you as a, a finder eyepiece or wide field eyepiece. This is good for observing Andromeda galaxy, Pleiades, uh, you know, finding the extended star fields, like for example, the things like the North American Nebula, depending of course on your, on your telescope aperture size. If you come one step, uh, lower than that in the focal length, you come with something like 24, 25. Uh, but here it is important that you have the lowest number of the elements. And to my experience, for uh, especially on the moon and objects like the star fields, uh, this uh, orange topped um, SV Boni aspheric 23 millimeter eyepiece. <laughs> it's exotic. It's the best eyepiece I have ever tried. It's the sharpest view I've ever seen. And there is a reason for that. Uh, it's because the number of the elements in this is very limited. Unlike any other eyepiece that you may see, premium eyepieces or expensive eyepieces, as you call them, they, which have a lot of uh, uh, lenses in them. Every one of those lenses actually absorbs and uh, reduces the, uh, the amount of the light you finally reach, reaching your eye. With this one, you have the minimum number of the lenses, but because the lens, the top lens, is shaped uh, through molding, um, uh, this uh, eyepiece has a very well-corrected field of view. The field of view is 62 degrees, plus those are 52 degrees. And with this, you feel really comfortable, but at the same time, the image is bright. Uh, the only thing is that I recommend this for any telescope, which is... Uh, 
has a F number above seven. Uh, below seven, I don't recommend this. For example, Schmidt Cassegrain's. Um, you can use it, uh, sorry, not Schmidt Cassegrain, uh, things like a Dobsonian F5 telescopes. I don't recommend this. But uh, for Schmidt Cassegrain, for Microsoft, perfect. For Newtonians, normal Newtonians, or uh, refractors like this, or a four inch Newtonian, or uh, ETX 90, the three and a half inch uh, Microsoft telescope, is perfect. Anything above F7, focal length of the eyepiece. So if you have this and you have this, you already have a good set started to make. The next thing I recommend is that you get some low power, uh, high power, uh, low focal length eyepiece, something like a, a 10 millimeter focal length. This is a SV Boni Aspheric uh, 10 millimeter, 62 degrees eyepiece. I've seen my sharpest view of the moon with this eyepiece. I have a video about this testing this is even even better than a orthoscopic orthoscopic eyepieces are the superb eyepieces I, I, I cannot praise them enough but this one is, is better than them it beats them easily we'll have them for breakfast <laughs> so this um, SV Boni Aspheric will make your eyepiece set complete you can go for anything like the um, six millimeter eyepiece or uh, something like seven millimeter eyepiece, but uh, practically when you have this seven, a uh, 10 millimeter eyepiece, you don't need more than this, more than. So if you have any of these three eyepieces, one uh, finder eyepiece, one uh, medium range, uh, uh, 23 millimeter eyepiece, and one high power eyepiece, in most uh, weather condition, atmospheric conditions, these are enough for you. So your set is complete. But in the case, if you wanted to, you know, go beyond the weather was really exceptionally good that you wanted to go beyond that and see more details, you can use a Barlow. Any, any Barlow will do this. This is a Celestron one. This is not especially expensive or anything. Uh, it will be enough for all the things that you need. There are generic ones also. And funny enough, you can buy all of this directly from China. And it's very easy directly from China, either through the AliExpress or through eBay. And uh, they come to you very quick. I bought most of this from the, directly from China. And uh, they make now very good eyepieces, I'm telling you. And they have made uh, huge uh, leaps in the um, production of the uh, eyepieces in quality range. So with this tree range, you perfectly have a set of eyepieces that is uh, suitable for anything. Uh, low magnification, medium, and high magnification. Uh, higher focal length, medium, and lower focal length. That's, that makes you, for your eyepieces, for the one and a quarter inch uh, eyepiece holder, which most of the um, introductory telescopes have that. If you have even a bigger telescope, you can use, just use an adapter like the one that we have on here and just adjust it for that. Something like uh, this, uh, which as you can see here, we have a, let me just tighten this and it easily can accept this size of eyepiece. And you are ready to go. And these ones also go. And if you want to put a bar low, you do it like that. You put your eyepiece here, the screw opens, and then goes on this. You have now, instead of a 10 magnification, because this doubles your magnification, this is a two times bar low, you will have five millimeter eyepiece as if. And it gives you the best view that you can possibly achieve with, within your climate. Five, I've, in my uh, experience, I don't use much uh, of that uh, range of the magnification with this eyepiece that I have. So this is the eyepiece adapter, as I told you, you can, you can adjust it for any, uh, use it in the two inch uh, bigger, uh, two inch size barrel taped eyepieces. So you will use a smaller eyepieces on this with this accessory. 
Um, I just wanted to mention what what kind of objects you can see with this eyepiece, which it was the highest magnification eyepiece, 10 millimeter. You can see the rings of Saturn. You can see the two belts of the Jupiter. Depending on the telescope, you can see even more. And all the satellites, Galilean satellites of the Jupiter, Titan, um, Enceladus, and uh, some of the largest uh, satellites of the Saturn. Um, with the Barlow, you can see more details on the... Uh, uh, Jupiter and uh, you know festoons and the blue patches, blue gray patches. Um, in the when the Mars is closer to Earth, you can see the some of the uh, albedo features uh, on the planet Mars. Uh, in early morning hours, if it is uh, during the opposition of the Mars, you can see the brightening edge, brightening of the haze forming at the edge of the. Um, down the sky of the Mars also, it gets blue, kind of whitish. You can see lots of details uh, on the moon, many domes, many craters, volcanic domes, uh, many reels, there are little valleys and uh, lava tubes, uh, endless possibilities to observe. So this is for the one and a quarter and uh, you can stop to watch this video if you don't, if you have, uh, reach what you want. But I can tell you that if you want really high planetary eyepieces, I would give you a guide on that in a separate video.